Okay, uh, hi everybody. It's a uh, Saturday, April 7th, a uh, nice sunny day. Getting out in the yard a little bit, uh, temperature's up, sun's shining. Be a great day to uh, take care of a couple of little things we've been going to do here. Uh, first up at today, I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to change the oil and the filter on our 85 Honda CB700S Nighthawk. Um, pretty pretty basic thing but you know a lot of people are afraid to touch bikes for whatever reason they'll change the oil and filter in their car but when it comes to their bike they just they think it's magic so uh, we'll take a little walk through I mean it's not hard to do at all and uh, it's another one of those things where you know you can do it yourself in your garage and save yourself a couple dollars hey why not so let's uh, let's get going okay the uh, first thing on our Honda here, um, as you'll notice, and this is something I've seen uh, on several other bikes too, you might want to check it out. Up in the front here, what we have is um, an actual um, oil cooler. And you'll notice that where it's mounted up here, it actually is mounted into the frame. So what you have is the down tube of the frame actually holds oil. And it goes back in here. It actually circulates up through the frame uh, into the cooler from the engine. So when you're changing your oil, um, one thing that's kind of important to keep in mind is there's actually three oil drain plugs on this bike. Um, you got one drain plug right here. Oh, if I can get it up under here, which is your your main drain plug right here. Um, well, I'm picking this up with the camera. But then here, you have um, another smaller drain plug in this part of the frame. And there's actually one of those plugs on either side. You have to drain all three plugs to get all the oil out. And the other thing that you need to do um, before, and of course we have our, our oil filter here in the front, right up in here. Um, the one thing that you have to be um, careful of before you change the oil on any of these things, start them up. Let them run for a few minutes. Let them uh, get up to uh, temperature and nice and warm, and that way you'll get you know a real good amount of oil draining out. If it's cold, a lot of times you'll still we, you'll leave a lot of residual in the engine. You won't actually change it. Okay, so let's uh, get you guys set up here. We'll pull a couple of plugs here draining get that under motion actually on this one not this get it in there This is our main uh, oil drain. When you take these plugs out, you need to make sure that you check the condition of the uh, sealing washers on the plug. Uh, probably not a bad thing to change this oil. It's pretty dark and discolored, so we'll freshen that up. Like I say, it's new to us. Yeah, always check out this aluminum washer on here. Make sure it's in good condition. You know, no cracks or breaks or anything like that in it. If there is, uh, replace it. You can pick them up at your uh, local auto parts store. They usually have a like an assortment of them that you can choose from. These plugs don't have to be uh, real tight, guys. Um, you know, just snug them up. Don't get carried away. Um, a lot of this stuff just threads into aluminum and so forth, so you have to be careful with them. Okay. 
you see we're getting getting some oil out here so oil does you know kind of accumulate in these down down parts of the frame here now once again it's from the uh, it's from the oil cooler now before I pull any of these plugs out I actually take the uh, the oil fill plug out of the other side it kind of vents it makes everything easier to drain um, that drain for a minute. I'm going to move this over. Let's see if we can get see if we can get the other side uh, draining at the same time here. And get it all all going out at once. Go over and see if I can pull that out. Actually hit the pan with everything. This one over here is a little bit, a uh, little bit farther this way. So I think what we may do here to kind of avoid making a mess, maybe we'll wait and we'll move our pan over this side to catch this one. Got what we're going to get out of here. Once again, there's a ceiling washer on this plug as well. Make sure that washer's this washer right here is in good shape. And uh, put her back up in. Okay. Of course, carry wrench over on the other side. Say, um, I guess we need that extension on there. Just snug these up. Don't, uh, don't have to get too carried away. Snug them up. Squeeze that, squeeze that ceiling washer a little bit. All right, now we can move over here. Get the oil flowing on the other side. Okay, so that's we got everything draining really good out of there. You notice we actually got a, a bit more oil from the other side. Um, it's not always the same from side to side. It all depends what, how it stops and what's where when it stops. So we'll let this drain for a few minutes. We'll put those plugs back in, and then uh, next up we'll uh, change our oil filter. Okay, so we've got our. Uh, three plugs back in. Um, the oil is finished draining out of there. Next up we're going to do is change our oil filter. Now the one thing that you'll notice I've got is I put a rag up in here and what I'll do is I'll actually put a couple of them up in there because the way that they position the uh, exhaust pipes with the oil filter when you loosen that filter up and a little bit of oil that comes out of it goes all over the exhaust pipes. So when you start it back up, you get a lot of smoke and stuff like that. So I try to catch as much of it as I can with these absorbent rags. Now, they also, they make some uh, fancy little filter wrenches that go in and get these filters off. Um, it's kind of tight because, you know, you have a limited area to work with. What I find is I just go with a pair of, you know, I got a good sized pair of channel lock pliers here. And what I will do is very carefully just kind of go in between the pipes. You don't want to scrape, scrape your pipes all up and just grab it and turn it. Um, very easy. Um, nothing really special um, about that tool. And turn it a little bit. And that loosens it enough where it will come right off for you. Our oil, so we're 
kind of catching that with our rag as much as we can. And the filter comes off. Of course, the next challenge is actually getting the filter out. Once you get it, once you get it off. Okay. Okay, so now that we've made a huge mess, we've got our filter out. Take that out of there. One thing I'll try to show you guys is as you look in there, you'll notice this right here is actually the seal off the filter. Sometimes they stick on the thing. Make sure that that's not stuck on there. Um, when you put your new filter on because the two of them will squish together and you've got a surefire leak which is something that nobody wants okay so like I say in the end even though no try as we might we've got oil all over everything here so Wipe that down really good. And I think probably what we'll do is spray a little cleaner up in there. Get our new filter here. And I always Put some oil on the uh, on the seal of the new filter before I put it up in there. These filters basically only fit up in there one little way. And when you get them up in, you're fine. But there's barely enough clearance getting around. Once you get your filter up in, up in place, um, hand tight is fine. Um, you don't need any more than that. Just make sure it's good and snug. with your hand and that'll be fine okay all right so our new filter is on in place uh, we wiped out all the oil stuff off our pipes and cleaned the bottom of our case and what we've done is through our fill plug right here we've uh, poured in three and a half quarts of fresh 20W50 motor oil. So now, the only thing left to do is to start her up, let her run for a few minutes. Um, check for any leaks, anything like that.
That's basically all there is to uh, changing the oil on the bike. The, uh, the oil filter fit in the front is one of my things that I always complain about, but every inline four bike I've had like this has pretty much been the same thing. I think they they design them to be built, and they actually don't design them really to uh, work on. So you got just barely enough room to get that filter out and have the bike. So. I don't know what they I don't know what they charge at, at the bike shop to do stuff like this. I've always done it myself. But you know, it's another one of those things where if you've got a little bit of time, it's not difficult. You can save yourself some money by you know doing your own basic maintenance yourself. Um, it's not real hard to do um, on a lot of this stuff. And actually, if you have all your original manuals and paperwork, then. Uh, It'll pretty much walk you through actually. Okay, so that uh, that is changing the oil and filter on your uh, 700 Nighthawk. Um, hope you picked up something. Um, biggest thing is, is just figuring out how to kind of wind the uh, oil filter out of those pipes, at least the first time that you do it on a particular bike. Um, of course, usually by the next time I go to do it, I've forgotten how I did it this time, so I start all over again. But that's, uh, that's how you do it. So, next up... What we're going to change is our shaft drive oil here in the rear is actually a, basically a ring and pinion in the back of these with the shaft drive and it's uh, filled with gear oil. So we'll be changing that. Again, this plug has another little ceiling washer in it, a lot like the uh, the engine did. So you just just pull your plug and uh, let it drain. A little windy here today, so of course everything that we've drained out has ended up going everywhere. On us. I always try to make as little mess as possible. To just you know, I don't think we need to be dumping oil all over the place. I mean, it's environmentally better you know if you don't pollute any more than we have to so you know when you're doing this kind of stuff just try to keep all your stuff cleaned up as good as possible once again we got another little ceiling washer here same thing I mean just make sure it's you know in good shape and you won't have any problems they don't hold an awful lot of uh, oil 
back here. I think it's, I don't know, like 14 ounces or something like that. So it's not an awful lot, but it's just another fluid that is quite often, I think, kind of neglected. You know, people overlook it and it doesn't get changed. So who knows how long this oil has been in here. Um, this bike does have some miles on it at 51,000. So, we'll, uh, you know, dump it out and fill her up and call it good. Just enough today that's blowing everything I'm doing all over the place here. Kind of irritating, but I guess the wind is one of those things that you don't really have much control over. So after that drains out there, um, just take and put your plug back in. Just like the others, I mean, it doesn't have to be super tight. Just snug it up in good shape and, and you'll be fine. Take some. fresh oil just put it right back into that plug I like to kind of kind of rot thing, rotate things around as I'm filling it kind of works the oil up in Basically the level is full to the bottom of the the opening there. So actually this was a little low. Fluid level below this when we started, so We're just about there. You can see it. A little bit more in there. your oils keep your oils oil levels full keep your keep your fluids you know clean fresh Out. Got it. All right, so we're full. Now, right, once you get to that point, just take and Plug in. There's an O-ring on the inside of this plug that seals it. Just 
just like everything else we've done, doesn't have to be super, super tight. Just put that back in. Snug it up, and we're good. That's uh, all there is to it. Okay, so we've gotten gotten our, our fluids changed, our engine oil filter, and our rear uh, rear oil. So we'll get pretty good. That'll give us a good start, and uh, to do our own maintenance program on this bike, and. Uh, Hopefully we'll put a lot more miles on and won't have any problems. So I guess that's going to wrap this one up. Um, thanks for watching. I appreciate your comments and so forth. Um, we'll uh, see you the next time. Thanks.